Narquisa Ortolano was a private first class of the 2nd Battalion, 57th Infantry Regiment, U.S. Army, Philippine Division. Early in the morning of January 12, 1942, after the start of the Battle of Bataan, sounds of artillery shelling and machine gun fire began to be heard in one of the sectors in which Ortolano was located. Having steeled himself for the worst scenario, he took a sip of water and prepared his Browning machine gun, M1917. This machine gun was impressive for its time, with features including 600 rounds per minute, a target range of about 1370 meters, and water cooling. By this time, Ortolano was already tired through lack of sleep and the systematic attacks of the Japanese. The situation was aggravated by the exhaustingly warm Philippine arid season. In addition, the Philippine scouts did not close their eyes at night, but instead peered into the darkness, watching for any signs of movement. It is worth noting that the full-scale offensive known as the Battle of Bataan had begun a few days earlier on January 7, 1942. About 75,000 Japanese soldiers with the support of the Navy, artillery, tanks, and planes had stormed the beaches and crashed into the defenses set by the Filipino and American defenders. Despite persistent opposition, the Japanese troops managed to break through the external defense. When overcoming obstacles such as barbed wire, the Japanese did not spare their own soldiers. In one nighttime attack, they ordered the first wave of soldiers to throw themselves on the barbed wire in fortifications and hold it with their bodies. After that, the remaining soldiers were able to climb over them and into the trenches of the Allies. For several days, the 57th Infantry Regiment faced almost nonstop battles, and this exhausted the soldiers. At one particular remote machine gun position were two soldiers, Ortolano and his gunner. They sent a machine gun to the second line of defense and got ready to defend themselves. When the shooting began between the Filipino defenders and the Japanese, the entire sector was illuminated by the light of the exploding shells. It was in one of those flashes that Ortolano saw his assistant's lifeless body fall to the ground. As if that wasn't bad enough, from the side of a nearby sugarcane field, he heard shots and loud cries of Banzai and saw Japanese soldiers approaching. Ortolano began firing his machine gun while allegedly shouting various kinds of curses. He managed to kill four people before his machine gun jammed. Undeterred, Ortolano took out his 45 caliber pistol and began to shoot. He fired seven shots and killed five more enemies. However, two angry Japanese soldiers with bayonets were rapidly approaching from different directions. Reaching the trench, the soldiers tried to slaughter Ortolano, but he continued to resist them. One Japanese soldier struck at Ortolano who dodged and grabbed for the weapon. The soldier jerked a rifle to the side and the sharp edge of the bayonet cut off the brave Filipino's thumb, but that didn't stop Ortolano trying to grab the rifle from the enemy a second time. A few moments later, Ortolano was stabbed in the back. Overcoming severe pain, he managed to kill his attacker with a bayonet. Without pausing, Ortolano then deployed his rifle and killed the final Japanese soldier. After that, with an unwavering dedication to duty, he returned to his post in order to bring his machine gun back to combat readiness. When Ortolano's commander arrived and saw that there was a lone soldier in a field of dead bodies, the commander asked what had happened. And Ortolano replied, 11 Japanese were just trying to scare me, but we didn't have to worry about them anymore. Unfortunately, Ortolano was captured. He had to suffer through a 65-mile Bataan death march, during which time the prisoners were forced to go for several days without food and water. After that, Ortolano spent 12 months of captivity in the famous Japanese prison camp, where he almost died. However, he survived and was able to collect a prestigious award in person. For his bravery in battle, Ortolano became the first Filipino to be awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. Ortolano should not only be remembered in the Philippines as a hero, but also by Americans who he fought alongside with. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more content. Chisone! Chisone!